So as a reminder, uh, there's only like 13 minutes or so left in the show. Uh, We'll be going to uh, dinner after the show's over at El Arroyo. Any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to come. You don't have to be a member to attend almost any of our events. But if you come down to preach, proselytize, or provoke, provoke please don't. Just uh, pick up the phone or pen an email. Give us a call instead. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got uh, Caesar in Queens. How are you? Uh, <clears throat> hello. Uh, do you guys remember me? This is my fifth time following on this show. I remember you. Yeah, yeah I, I remember you. How you uh, doing? You're the awesome. That was like almost a year ago I called, but decided to call, you know, it's been a while, and I like arguing with you guys because I don't have any friends who are uh, atheists, so I like to give okay. it a shot. Sure. Uh, so basically, um, I have a, uh, I always had this original argument for myself, like I thought about it, it came to me years ago. Uh, basically, when I, I remember it happened when I was uh, walking to... Um, to my uh, junior high school. So this was like over 15 years ago. I'd like to try it out. It's kind of unusual, um, and I won't blame you if you don't understand or, or it doesn't make any sense to you. Uh, would you like to hear it? Sure, thanks. Yeah, but try and do it as quickly as you can because we are running low on time. Okay. Basically, this came to me. I don't know why. I wasn't really provoking any thoughts or anything. It just came to me, just hit me out of the blue. Basically, the, the argument goes like this. In order to be uh, self-aware, you know, you have a self-awareness right now, obviously. All human beings do. And um, basically, in order to have your self-awareness, it has to be uh, eternal. Like, you can't, um, it has to be unbroken. What, like, what, it has why? to be forever going. What, why? Because, like, this, in order to know that you're self-aware, like it has to be unbroken, it has to be an unbroken chain. I'm not Caesar, talking about memories or amnesia. Caesar, Caesar, like, babies maybe. become self-aware around the age of two. So how is it unbroken if, if they become self-aware and they're not self-aware before, before the age of two? No, I know it doesn't have to do with memories, like... Um, or the, the development of the brain, like... Um, I, know, I know the argument, yeah, I know what you're saying. You're not self-aware at such a young age, but that's if you okay, don't... Okay, so, so how is that eternal if it didn't exist at one point? No, no, well, obviously, I'm assuming it did because I believe, you know, what, I believe what, in... What's in, the justification? Uh, in God and in Christianity, so sure. obviously, it did right. exist before. Now, Caesar, I know I can't prove C that to you. I don't have uh, evidence for that. Okay, but, Caesar, Caesar, if you're going to believe something... Because you already believe in a God and use that as evidence for God, that's called circular reasoning. And there's no point in, in having a discussion if you're going to begin with the presupposition that a God exists in order to prove that a God exists. Yeah, but that's not my only reason. I have other reasons. That's well, why don't you give us your one. best reason? Uh, all right, I have my, my top three is the uh, finally to the universe Jesus and the near death experience. Okay, well, the universe isn't finely tuned. You have no evidence that Jesus existed, and near-death experiences are hooey. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you, you speak with that with certainty. Like, if you're so, like, um, if there's no evidence that God exists, um, why even bother doing the show? Why even allowing... Because the, the harm of religion you? exists. <laughs> I tell you what... <laughs> If you believed in magical pixies that created the universe and there was no evidence to support this, and I felt that your, your beliefs were harmful to yourself and to others, wouldn't it be a good thing for me to try to educate people about that? Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, but. I There's no but. In, in, uh, There's no in but. intelligence created the universe. Well, I know you believe that, Caesar. I know well, you believe that. What we're asking for is why. Why yeah, should exactly. anybody, all right. why should anybody believe that? Okay, first of all, um, with the fine tune, you know, I don't want to get into these uh, arguments because they're going to take so much time, but I have two, okay, I have two scientific reasons why I'm not an atheist, and one of them is because I believe life only comes from life, and I also believe that language is, only, is always a product of a mind. Now, that is scientific. That is not I, I'll agree with to believe. I, I, Caesar, I'll agree with you that language comes from mind. 
Um, and mm -hmm. I'll disagree with you on life always comes from life because we know that life can arise from non-living matter. Uh, we don't exactly know how it happened in this particular incidence, but we know that it can occur. Both John Oro's experiments, the, the, the Miller-Urey experiments, things like that, demonstrate that living, living material can come from non-living material. So set that one aside, and I'll agree that language comes from a mind. All right. I always, uh, all right. But we're not Christians. About the language from the mind. I missed that slide with the life from life. I don't agree with you, but all right, let's Then you're wrong. On the language from the mind. I mean, mind. no, you're just What's your you're scientifically wrong. It? You don't have an objection. Uh, sure, go, that's why I said go with the language one, because on the, on the other one, you're just scientifically wrong. I mean, you just... I'll give you that. All right, I'll argue about that. All right, so... Sure. All right, so my argument with the language from the mind thing... Yes. Uh, the, the, you know that life needs information, it needs a blueprint to... to DNA is... DNA, we know Caesar? DNA and all that, Caesar, right? Caesar, DNA is not a language, and if that's your argument, we're done. DNA is not a language? That's correct. It's chemicals. Uh, what's it's a your purely. Of a language? It's a, it's a, it's language a language only from two minds, yes. two human beings. Or yes. Yes. Two. Uh, a language is the product of a mind. It allows communication from one mind to another. DNA. Animals have language, right? Sure. Animals have forms of language. Exactly. But uh, in order for you to to uh, refute my my thing, what the DNA stuff is that you have to uh, presuppose that. Uh, no intelligence created it. No, I don't have to presuppose that, Caesar. I don't have to presuppose that. What I'm saying is that you have to demonstrate that it, that it required an intelligence, and calling it a language doesn't accomplish that because it's not a language. It doesn't communicate from one mind to another. It's chemical interactions that follow the physical laws of nature. The fact that it's the building blocks of life, that it is often viewed as a blueprint or an instruction set, that's at the cell level. That has nothing to do with minds, and it's not a language, and you don't get to to invent a god by merely asserting that it is a language. Yeah, well, so you're saying that the language of DNA is the, is the actual chemicals? It doesn't have uh, information? Like, the, like say, that's like saying ink on, on uh, the ink on the book is the actual language. No, I'm saying it's, it's not a language. It's not a language. The uh, chemicals itself is not a language. Chemicals Correct. Chemicals are just chemicals. Correct. The fact, the, fact, right. the fact that the chemicals are not a language, what they do also isn't a language. Their interactions are pure chemical interactions governed by the laws of physics. The fact that they produce things doesn't make it a language. The fact that you, this is about, somebody has conned you with this idea of information. Uh, which is a big fuzzy word that makes it sound all important. It's not. It's not information in the same context. That's an equivocation fallacy. The fact that molecule, that there are self-reproducing proteins that build people, does not mean that it's a language and does not mean that they contain information in the same context that a book contains information. The information that we see or, the, or what we would identify as information coming from the genetic code is something that we imbue it with. It is our understanding that that in, that that produces that information. Because we because we have minds that can decipher information. Not it's, not I know decipher. What you're saying that that um, inanimate objects, uh, chunks of matter, have the ability to decipher information without a mind. No, that's, me, that's my point. That's my point, Caesar. They're not deciphering anything they're just doing whatever the physical laws of the universe dictate it's an entirely physical process the copying of DNA there's no deciphering there's no decision making there's no hey let me I should probably do this this thing here says I need oh. an A so let me get an A when I say decipher That's... I don't mean like think about it I mean read it I have to read no it info. doesn't it doesn't read because reading implies a mind that is thinking about it it doesn't read it just does DNA, <laughs> DNA, yeah, okay. DNA simply, right. DNA copies it. I, DNA copies, that's it. It's an action, it's a physical action. There's no awareness there, there's no consciousness, and if there were, it would need to be proved, not asserted. Okay, so basically you're telling me that there is no information in DNA. Not in the sense that you're wanting to say that there's information, no. But in what sense 
is there information in DNA then? There's, there's information in the sense that we can look at what happens there and show how that progresses, and we can determine which building blocks will do which things. But that is us looking at the, the end product and backtracking to say, this is what caused this. It's a causal relationship. It's not a language. It's understanding the mechanism. Right. I mean, it, it's the equivalent, I, I would guess, of uh, saying that a gear and a clock has information because certain gears at certain ratios will change time at a di on, on the change the handles yeah, and, on the clock at a different rate. A mathematical, uh, an engineer, you can't use these examples of clocks because you're invoking intelligent design. No, no, I'm not. I'm sorry that you don't get that. But what I'm saying is that there's no information intrinsic in the gear of a clock or in DNA. Exactly, information is not from matter. You can't That's say exactly. exactly. You can't say exactly, Caesar. You can't. You can't say exactly and then disagree with me. I can't disagree with you. You can't what? say exactly and then disagree with me. No, because we we you you We have a fundamental misunderstanding. Yes, here one of us understands science. I believe that information is completely matter, and information are two completely separate things. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Matter and information are two completely separate things. Exactly. And, and now, and now, and now the show is over. The credits are up. Thanks to the crew. I apologize that we have run out of time. I'll talk to Caesar if he's still around after the show's over. We'll be back next week. Thanks, Don. Sorry you didn't get to no, jump pleasure. in on, no, no, my pleasure. on the conversation. You're doing great. You're doing great all see, by yourself. See you all next week. <laughs>